welcome back to Men's Truth. I'm yes, yours sir. truly, Chris. It's man, bro. Ken, Ken Evans in the building, y'all. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Thank y'all for tuning in. Hey, we just now launching this thing, and uh, it's been a blessing, true blessing, yes, to sir. be able to put this yes, team sir. together. My man Trey behind the camera in productions. Hey, the, the guy is nasty, so stay tuned to a lot of stuff coming from him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, this is all about coming together, this show about coming together, creating a brotherhood, and we can be able to outreach in all phases, not just have the topics talked about, but reach in depth into uh, uh, people's lives and see how far they made in life, the stumbles and everything like that. But we also want to be able to create something where we have resources for people who are in need. A lot of people in need that don't want to ask about it, but we're creating that here. So we want to kick things off. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask my big brother, we always want to start out the show with, what is your win in that first 24 hours of your day? God gave you the opportunity to be awake today, and we want to get that win. So, big bro, what's the win that you had for this last 24 or something? Man, about yesterday? what's going on, family? <laughs> you know, we first want to give a shout out to all of our men's podcasts, yeah. the Men's Truth fans out here. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Man, without y'all, we would be nothing. nothing. And we're going <laughs> I see you. I see y'all. I see you. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. But to get back to the question, bro, my win, I don't even really want to talk about my win, man. Let's talk about MB went crazy the other day, bro. 70 points? He had kind of a beam like Kobe performance. Yeah, you see my face. I feel, like, I feel like he, he stole all his teammates' points. Oh, Is man. That one dude on, is that one dude on the bench right there? <laughs> hey, I know, I know. He's like, man, hold on, what is it? He started calculating his minutes, right? Yeah, that's crazy. You know? Seventy points, but man. Seventy game. points. And cat turned around and hit him for sixty-two. You know, that's that's how they feel. You, I don't know if you knew this or not, but the same exact day that they did it, the same day Kobe hit eighty-one, bro. <laughs> it's the year twenty-four. It's the year twenty-four. Is it, is it, is it, is it all threes? <laughs> You know, well, you know, Kobe did it kind of all kind of fast. He did, right? he did all over. You know, but I think in B, he hit like six threes. Don't quote me on that. I think he hit like six threes. Okay. Well, he's seven foot, bro. Seven foot. You know? It's, it's and, and he, he kind of babied old Wimby, too, man. The, the future of the NBA. What about the shirt guy? You know? <laughs> you want to get a shirt <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, also, man, you know, in football, mm -hmm. man, we seen, you know, a couple teams, man, get knocked out. We seen a couple teams. Man, stand man, up. Man, you know, this is what we love, man. You know, I, I mean, our podcast, I mean, we're talking about men. We all kick it back watching the game, right? Yeah. You know, so we really enjoy sports this weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, so my win kind of catered to me, kicking back with the family. Okay. We had a little pizza. That's, I got to enjoy some sports, man. That's a blessing. Yes, sir. But mine, you know, you Let's talk mine? about it's a your job. win. <laughs> How did your hey, win go? My win start with uh, God Almighty waking me up. Who? Start the day. Can we get an applause for that? That's the first yes, win. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. After that, um, man, just working on this here. And creating so many connections. I have so many calls, so many brothers reaching out. Yeah. And it's not even the show. It's watching everybody come together. And I'm touching yeah. areas that yeah. I never thought I would touch. So uh, working on that has been a win. If I got one phone call and somebody gave me a testimony that yeah. I didn't even have. Let's go. I wasn't expecting that. Let's go. So, you know, with, with zero you know, in your, in your pockets to be able to just like throw it on this whole production. I feel so geeked about it. Like, I feel like a lot of these uh, podcasts out here, they're, they're amazing. Yeah. But this airing out dirty laundry yeah. without the help. Yeah. And yeah. so feeling like the help is feeling like I'm doing God's will. Yeah. So, man, I feel geeked as I'll get up. Hey, man, that's a win for both of us, man, yeah. because the reality is, man, and it's not to even talk about mm -hmm. other people and, and what they do, man, but God has given mm -hmm. us, man, for a lane a and a purpose, man, a purpose. For just right on time, man, because they're all at their highlight. All of, all of the negativity is surround, man, surround. and God set us right there smack in the valley. Of the shadow of death, man. You know, you know negativity is juicy. It's always it's juicy. Man. Everybody like, yes. You know, but yes. that's what it's juicy, but it dries out. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? That's the part that people don't realize. That's that. what people yeah, know, man. You know, that's why you have to find the next, you know, crazy thing to jump mm -hmm. on because it dries itself out. I, you know, I know this. Everybody's been tuning in to Cat Williams, and I, and I love Cat Williams. Oh man, uh -oh. hilarious! Oh, hey man, don't get caught up on Cat Williams. I don't get caught up on I gotta say, we did. Everybody loved it. They wanted to hear the dirt, but 
how did it affect the rest of the people that were spoken about? Yeah. Are yeah. they going to get another job? Is going to mess with they, their family's funding? Yeah. Or is it, are people going to give them credibility moving forward? Or yeah. What happened behind the scenes? What was the purpose? What was what was his, did his rant or, or did him coming out explain anything or help anything? i say this, man. Some people feel like, uh, first and foremost, with Cat Williams, that the purpose of what he did, mm -hmm. he was playing defense. He was attack first. Of course. So he came back and, and he defended himself. Just so happened, you and we used to say this too as kids. You can't get mad if you hit somebody mm -hmm. and they take it far enough and it does damage to you. You can't, you know, get mad at how a person responds. You know, yeah. but but who gets caught? You know who get caught? Who get always get caught? The second one gets caught. The second one always get caught. But you know what? His call, I don't know. His call is kind of funny, man. <laughs> hey, man, when he called, said he said he was sitting up there looking like a warrior. <laughs> Nah, man. Hey man, don't roll, bro. He said I'd punch him in the, the big old stomach and watch him bust. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I fell over. I said, man, I can't tell oh, you. Oh man, you know. Hey, but shout, shout out to it's crazy. Shannon Sharp for uh, putting somewhere where people can talk. Yeah. You know, and this show did amazing. The numbers on that, man, just make you scratch your head. Like, hey, I guess airing out people's dirty laundry yeah. really get a lot of views. Yeah, but if we gonna do something different, yeah, we gonna open up. And see what type of laundry we putting into this washer, yeah. and we're gonna go into depths of how to clean it. Yeah. Okay. So I like that. I like that. I, I love getting deep, but I love any results to make you better. I right. always been taught that by my, my my parents is no matter what you do in life, your last name means something. Right. So if you get put in the ground and they read your your uh, uh, obituary. Don't let them dog you out of your obituary. You yeah. know, they want them to say good things about you in the end. Yeah. So, um, you know what they used to say? You got a, a start date and you got a finish date. But it's all about what you do in the dash. Exactly. You know, the dash is what tells the story <clears throat> about who you were mm -hmm. and how you impacted people. Which it kind of leads us right into this right here. The first, though, that's why I came on with the 24th. Huh? Every twenty in every twenty four, what's your win? What's your win? What's your win? Because those dashes are twenty four. Every time yeah. you get another chance, we can blink tomorrow and be gone. Yeah, you right. wouldn't know it. So, you know, if we holding on to stuff, or we, you know, fell here and there. It's that twenty four hour we can get a win. Yeah, and that's what we here to do to come together and get this win, which is going to now lead us into our discussion for this episode. Yes. Are you ready for this? Let's go. <laughs> you ready for this? <laughs> Let's go. My hands are sweating. You know, hey, hi. You know, well, without <laughs> further ado, we got a special guest, y'all. And, and I just want to do a little bit of introduction, even though we've already done an introduction. This guest, man, was uh, blessed enough, man, to come on our show and be a part of our show. To help lead our show, co-host our show, <clears throat> tell you some things about this man. Um, he was brought up, you know, in a, a large family environment, you know, played ball. Not only did he play ball at a, at a level of we all play ball, he played ball at a level that it was able to be paid for, took his talents and rose to the next level that most ball players want to go to. And then after that, he says, you know what? I want to go overseas and take some of this talent overseas and give them a blessing of who I am. And then after he took that talent overseas, he said, you know what? I'm going to hang my jersey up and I'm going to join the service. And man, this man turned around and became a veteran as he is now. And, and he served our country after playing ball. Come on, man. That's amazing. And so much more to his story. Without no further ado, brick to y'all, my little brother Chris to me, Mr. Christopher Graham sitting right next to me. Welcome to Men's Truth, my brother. Hey, let's go, up. let's go. I feel like, you know, get my helmet out. Yeah. Yeah, run through a couple. Yeah, you know, cats. You know, <laughs> hey, remember uh, uh, we were watching 
longest y'all when it first came out. It was like that build up there. Oh, hey, here it comes the, Hey, here it comes the, Hey, here it comes, the, hey, here it comes the, Y'all don't really want it. <laughs> hey, man. You know, so we're going to just do a... Uh, Let's do a little interview, man. Yeah, I'm, up, I'm, up, I'm, up, I'm up to bat first. You? I'm up to bat first, so. Uh, yes, yes. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Let's All right, go. man. So, first and foremost, I did a mild introduction that I felt, you know, my Steve Harvey impersonation type of introduction. <laughs> Let the people know. <laughs> Who is Christopher Graham? Where did you come from? Let's know about your childhood, man. Man, uh, let's let's start back in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, you had a young mom and dad <clears throat> that decided to, you know, have a huge heart. So my parents started out um, single parents come together. My mom had two, my dad had one, and then they had three boys after that. <clears throat> so we had. Uh, I'm a twin, by the way. My twin brother, Christian Graham. Uh, everybody from home know us as a trio, as a triplet. You can't really tell us apart because we feed off each other uh, so much. But <clears throat> being that huge heart, my parents already had to come together as a blended family to have these uh, kids. They decided to adopt three more. Oh, wow. Actually, more than that. They actually adopted close to seven <clears throat> cousins and, and, and friends. <laughs> And anybody from Indianapolis, from the northeast side, behind the fairgrounds, know we took in everybody. Wow. Wow. They took in everybody. So um, <clears throat> that's where I grew up at, behind the fairgrounds, 42nd Street. Everybody know how it is. In the early 90s, uh, between the west side and in that area, that was the, the most hot spot ever. Uh, gang affiliated neighborhood. Every other house was gang member house or a trap house. Wow. Wow. You know, and the oldest boy of the family um, was sucked up in it just because, you know, you either got to adapt or you're going to get swallowed up. Wow. And, you know, so uh, that many kids plus cousins, and the house was always packed. I never had a birthday by myself. I always had to share, of course, with this knucklehead, and then I had to share it with cousins. So you're looking at the birthday, and it's like splitting squares <laughs> and different candles in every way. So... Uh, I love my parents for that. They 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 bust their butt. They had multiple jobs. Out of that neighborhood, you lost one kid to the neighborhood, but kept the rest wow. intact. No matter how many jobs they worked, the older ones had to be the sergeants of the house when the generals and the captains were gone. You know, they ran the house. We was military be- uh, set for my father. The way you eat, you didn't put your elbows on the table. You didn't smack, you didn't eat with your hands. You drunk your drink last. You didn't leave the yard unless you got permission, even though we was that big. It kept a structure, but <clears throat> it was bad, man. I witnessed shootings almost every other day. Witnessed shootings every other day. I uh, tell the story as quick. I was a, a gang member that got caught up in a really bad shooting. Mm-hmm. And when I got up the next day, you see the tape everywhere, and you see the spot that he lost his life. Mm. And I'm poking with a stick his remains of his body. Mm. And so you think it's normal. You see it every day. It's like it's normal. You just, all right, on to the next day. It's almost like the first level of trauma. That you don't even think You don't even realize Mm. that it affects how you move and how you grow. Exactly. Go ahead and continue. So being with that older brother... Was, was adapted by it. Uh, my family was changed by his decision to be a part of that life. The, the guy who ran the game, uh, my brother first started, entered my house, I remember, I'm peeking from the stairway to look at in the living room, who's here in my house? And that dude looked like he was 6'4", he'd been about 290, jacked. He'd been in, he'd been in and out of jail. Man, that dude should have played ball or something. If you seen him, I, I couldn't make it up. Wow. Because his brother was big as well. But he sat down with my parents and he told my parents that my brother was, was out there and <clears throat> didn't come up with his payment like he's supposed to. And how he can took my brother's life, but he respected my parents. That's wow. how much respect they had in the neighborhood that 
no matter what was outside the house, everybody respected the pillars. House. Your parents were pillars. They were pillars. I want to just pause, just and I want to applaud your parents just at that point, man. Just how yeah. all the things that up to this point, I know this is a different type of part of the story, but it seems like you were brought up with a different level of morals, you know, within your community, man. Yeah. You know, but I'm sorry, I, I paused your story again. And I ain't let y'all know my, my parents, Richard and Deborah Graham, give them their flowers. Man, uh, thank y'all, y'all, for, for everything y'all did. Great job, great job. But when you have a leader of a, of a gang, now he covered, that gang covered five blocks wide and five blocks long before it crossed over to to uh, the vice lord wow. on that side. So he, he ran that whole organization there and he told my parents, I'm not gonna kill your son. But I'm gonna take him if he's gonna be out here and I'm gonna put him underneath my wing. Now my brother was very smart in school. I don't know student, but he was just he wanted he wanted more. He wanted to fit in, you know. Little slender dude wanted to fit in. So he became very smart to the street. I'm talking about brilliant at it. Learned everything he was taught, ran it. <clears throat> um he warned us. Don't follow me. If you follow me, I'm going to beat your tail every day I see you. I don't want to see you smoking weed. I don't want to see you out here trying to sell drugs because everybody going to get back to me and see it. So in the words, your, your older brother, even though he went and ventured off and mm -hmm. became a product of his environment, he had the type of mindset to block you and your other siblings yeah. from you know, attempting or indulging, which of course we have different things that we try to do. You know, we try to sneak around, but at this point of your life, he took all of the, the blunt of everything and said, no, I'm gonna go because this is just who I am. Right. But I refuse to let y'all absolutely allow absolutely. this to dictate who you are and who y'all are. Yeah. Go ahead and continue. Um, <clears throat> so that was a huge, huge uh, barrier for us. I faced it every day. I got off the bus, I faced it. I was at school. You know, now you mix in the school with the other side of the neighborhood, which is the other gang members, which has they little peons. You mix in every day. You face it every day. <clears throat> my father was a boxer, and all his brothers were boxers. So that was my first sport. So he was going to teach you self-defense. And he was like, you cannot use what I teach you unless it's, you're defending yourself. So we practiced every day. Nobody knew it. We practiced every day. It was on, it was on each other. It was with him. But um, So <clears throat> what age did you start uh, learning, you know, your, your dad's skills? Four. Yeah. You were four years old. Four years old. He said, come here, boy. Let me wrap your hands up and show yeah. you how you got, got all these boys in the house. You got wow. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Four years old. <laughs> That's cool. So, um, <clears throat> you you asked me yesterday when we was talking changes that influenced my childhood, traumas or whatever. Um, and I'm taking this question and pulling it in. I was bullied every day because there's so many. <clears throat> my parents wasn't rich, you know, so you and your brothers got to share clothes, um, share shoes. Um, you were dark skinned and we played outside all day long. So we, we were burnt, <laughs> we were burnt, uh, <laughs> different level. <laughs> different level. Uh, crispy. I think I went to a whole nother country. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so you have done, you have well done, <laughs> and you have uh, should have been done a long time ago that was accidentally left in the oven. That's what you right. mean. Right. So, <laughs> I, I didn't say all that, but. Uh, <laughs> so, we were bullied every day. Like, if you like a girl in school, I'm like, damn, she look beautiful. Uh, you black, you this, you all this, man, you that. And you either have to fight with your tongue or your fist. So yeah. your, your tongue got to be, your, your uh, speaking game with your jokes and everything got to be on point. So I'm, I'm, you know, throwing it right back, you know, getting them off of me here. And then, so you get off the bus, like, hey, give me them shoes. I'm like, no, you can't have no shoes. You scared. You scared as all get out. Give me your shoes. Give me your coat. And to your brother, give you, you know, give you the nod that it's okay to defend yourself. That's when the hands show. They weren't ready for it. Mm -hmm. And we lit them up. And, and when we fight, 
We're not fighting one at a time. Mom said, if they're going to fight, all you fight. Okay, so hold on. Now, I got to ask this question because I don't want to go past it. So where do you and your twin brother fall in the line of ages? <laughs> of your okay, other siblings. So it's 10 of us. Okay. And uh, we just found my big sister, the oldest. Uh, we just found her through uh, Accessory.com. Oh, wow. And it's my father's first daughter. Wow. We just found her two years ago. Renee, love you, big sis. Just found her. Um, she looks identical to my dad. Wow. And this was during his military time that, uh, you know, they uh, conceived the child that he didn't know. Mm. 52 years there. Wow. And that's heavy. And it's so crazy to see your know, sibling on camera and it looks just like it. <laughs> so where do we fall? <clears throat> Let's get to that point. Um, originally, we were the, me and my twin brother were the babies out of the five that my parents had together, and then we adopted um, uh, adopted uh, four. We adopted three. Um, my brother Josh, my two little baby sisters, Shatar and uh, Tyler, and then we had a, um, a step brother. Um, actually, no, that's right. I'm right. Wait a bit. And the sister. You you got your siblings together. Right? I got my sister. I, mean, I got <laughs> seven. I got my brother. I got my sister. So. <laughs> I forgot, you know, you got to add in, you yeah, miss yeah. your brother. You, you know? have to, man. Yeah. You can't miss no family members, man. Yeah. Good God. <laughs> so we we're, really, we're really the baby boys, but now we got, we, got, we got three younger ones underneath me. Josh and uh, Shatara and uh, Tyler are the, the last three now that are babies that we, we adopted fully. So um, <clears throat> 10 of us, when, when we have a family gathering, Everybody bring their kids and look like the family movie. Wow. But it's, it's, it's the most fun ever that you can have. Everybody in the city. Imagine. That's a huge family. Y'all, so it sounds like y'all more so are in the middle. Now we're in the middle. We got pushed up to the middle. So growing up, where were y'all? The babies. So when you were out there picking fights, <laughs> you were the baby. And they didn't know it. And you, the, 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 the people in the neighborhood didn't know you was fighting the baby, but the babies had hands. Oh Lord. Okay, let's let's get back to this. This is pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, more so. More uh, we gonna move more. Let's go, let's go. So yeah, that's that's where we started. But bullying took us down. Like they didn't know how that really felt when we came home and we felt like we couldn't go hang out with people in the neighborhood because. The real truth was coming out. People didn't really like you like that. When they put you, when they were good around their friends and the group, they would, you'd be the first one they dog out. And to defend yourself, I had to start, I already know that joke. You're going to call me a black this, black that. I already know it. So you cut them off from trying to make fun of you. You already, you know, say the, the joke they was going to say. Or if they try to intimidate you in, in, the, in this pack. So even the older dudes, like three or four years older than us, picking on us. We had to we had to rock them, so they stopped. You know, and it got to a point where I didn't want to fight, but I had no choice. But it caused wow. by yourself. Wow. And you had to fight, or or you didn't win, and you got to go home, and now you got to go back with the squad, and y'all all better win this one, or all y'all gonna see mama again. That's the real drill sergeant. Wow. I sent you out to defend your brother, and you come back with an L. Oh, it ain't acceptable. Go back out, and now you're going to get another L until you get a W. <laughs> that sounds like the birth of, did you get your win today? You know, that sounds like where it originated from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, you oh, better go get that win. <laughs> we, got that, we got that win right away. We got that win right away. I just, like it. I like it. because of that. Um, so that transition to having tough skin and kind of like, taking people not really accepting you. So you built this character of, like, I don't give up. You know what I mean? About what you Come think on. of me. To be real with me, man. Come on. You know, I don't care what you think of me. Yeah. You're going to respect me because if, if it's a male and you disrespect me, I'm just going to lay you out. So we started a reputation, like, don't fight them. Don't fight them. They all know how to fight. Yeah. Then if it was the females, if you sit here and you think you're going to embarrass them, I embarrass you. I don't care how cute you are. I embarrass you immediately, so I, I, I had a, a rough edge around me, you know, and we was respectful, very respectful. You had the manners that your parents taught you, yeah. and y'all, but we didn't take no mess from nobody. So y'all were the fighting family, 
and you know, sounds like y'all were the athletic family, you know. So, uh, what led into into you and and your family members and brothers to get into sports? Is everybody in the sports in your family? Yeah. Was it just you and your brother, your twin, um, or, or, or was also, it just you? All of the boys were in sports. Even the, the one who was out in the street played basketball, and he was really good. Um, but that was the way to keep us out of the streets. Uh, mom said. So hold on. So your your oldest brother, who's in the streets, mm -hmm. he was an athlete as well. Yeah, played ball. He can, really? Yeah, he was like six two and a half. Can jump through the roof. Oh man! And he just you know let it go. So he he chose the the streets over you know the, the gift that he had to play ball. He was he, dude was intelligent. Like if your if your kid can make honor roll, you know he can make honor roll. And he's in class, and, and this was during the time of development. You, you don't get that type of development. That the, cat, the kid needs to be challenged somewhere, and they didn't know what to do with him. So he got bored. You give him something, he finish it early. He do the work, he get bored, so he act out. So he, now he's in, in the principal's office in trouble. So it's creating an avenue where he just like forget it. This is not for me. Okay. And that's where he felt like he used his brains at how to make money. And that was his whole reason out there because, like I said, there's so, there's so many, uh, so much money coming from the street, and your parents them didn't have it like that. So he went and got it the way that he thought was best, and he just became very smart at it. Wow. So, um, was he made his transition mm -hmm. to you know okay, I'm going to be a full time street guy, and, and I'm assuming it, it worked out to a certain point with him, you know. Uh, if you don't mind, if you're comfortable with going yeah. into the story about your big brother, with because it had to be, even though he, he pushed y'all away from the streets, yeah. you know, did that still kind of make you more eager to join him? Because you seen he was very lucrative and, and it was, you know, it was kind of working for him. You know, what was the the, the your mindset, and also, you know, uh, what's the story with him? As you see all these movies where, you know, like New Jack City or you see uh, Belly or some other of these other ones where you you have an idol. Even like the Mafia movie, you have an idol. He was our idol. You know, you see him <clears throat> go out the street, you come back and you got a, a wad of cash in his pocket. Or the type of car he was driving. And you like, man, I want that. And you can hear him three blocks away because his speakers are that loud. Man. And he rattled in the whole house through I remember those days. So <laughs> he's like, man, he was my idol. But because he set you down and he really had a heart to heart with you, I never wanted to to do that. And um, this is a touchy topic. This is, this is another part of the trauma with really made sports grow for us. Because like I said, my mom kept us in sports all year round to distract us from the street. You had no time to be in the street other than playing playing with the kids in, in uh, the field, playing football or something like that. But <clears throat> idolizing him for so long and, and seeing what he went through, and like I said, when we looked at shootings, like it was nothing, like somebody arguing, in a sense. But when this day happened, <clears throat> late night in the summer, uh, gunshots rang out on the next block. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about these ain't the normal gunshots. It's like somebody airing it out. And he's like, I'm in the back room of the house. I hear it. I run to the front to the kitchen and say, Mom, you hear that? She's washing dishes, so she distracted. She said, I don't hear nothing. I said, Mom, the big just rang out on the next block. Everybody in the house all over the place doing their own thing. I'm the only one who heard it. Well, I'm nosy, so I go to the front porch to open the door. Now, we're two houses away from the fairground, so you can hear cars on the other side go by. And it's just, this picture, late night, close your eyes, you just hear a car go by. And I'm standing on the porch with my eyes closed and I'm listening. And a screech of a car comes and I look. And his car appears underneath the street light. And a second car appears and it's got three dudes hanging out. And they lighten this car. You just see sparks coming out the car. As he turned, he's on all flats. And I just scream out like Ricky. The boys in the hood, mama. She run. Cause she can hear it. 
And she just screamed out because his car is just in slow motion. And the guy's behind me in slow motion. And everything it seems like when I turn around, I had the whole family there watching. Hey, it's your boy Kev. Thank you for tuning in to Men's Truth. Don't forget, click the like button and subscribe. Also, follow us on our social media. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you guys for tuning in to Men's Truth. We really appreciate all the support and love that we get. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, to our social media. Pass it around to your friends and family so that way we can be able to reach other people out there. We appreciate it so much. She catches the ball, so they threw a Hail Mary and I finally caught it. But they said, son, your new name is going to be Brick. Because your hands is Brick. <laughs> <gonna be like." laughs> So bring that me what we thought bring that. Yeah, don't, don't you know, that you. wait a minute. Don't, don't I love it. You. I love it. Don't you don't talking about we going around the corner. Let's, let's, yeah. go. let's give a shout out to our Bernie King South Wales. We have the Bernie King has nothing but Wampus. I love it. I love it. You know, so man, look, let's go back. I to redeemed you. myself though. You did? That's why I want to go to. I, I, I redeemed look, myself. So, so look here, I redeemed myself the next year. <laughs> Every kid, and this is the, the, that whole year they taught us how to hit. After that, the, the next year, I was the guy where everybody went up to the upper grade. Any kid that went my, came my way, I knocked them out. Mm. Cold out. So you reversed the <clears throat> so I reversed the curse. Myself, you know. You know so, <laughs> tiny whitey. <laughs> so, let's do this, man. I want to talk about your high school journey. Uh, with football, let's let's go there, okay? Because this will lead us into exactly where your life happened and things went on moving forward. Uh, let's talk directly about sports. About how did high school sports go for you, and when did you know? Yeah, I am him. He is me. I already knew um, coming over to the public school that. I was, those dudes was all gifted. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those dudes right now could be playing at the highest level if we had the, the proper school system. Um, but <laughs> when I was playing in high school, when I first got over there, uh, I played running back, a fullback for my brother, and then linebacker. I was putting 200 yards a game or close to it uh, in the running back position. Or I would be a fullback and he would do it. You know, out there was showing off, showing off, but so, it wasn't really highlighted until that incident, that fight happened. Really? When you transfer to school and you're doing that, all these numbers over here in the public school, and they put you in the right position. Now you got the right coach, yeah. you got the right teachers, yeah. and they put you in position there. Um, I wasn't able to play uh, offense anymore because we had guys in the wing T system that were averaging over a thousand yards. They didn't need nobody else. Yeah. Put me on defense where we really needed somebody who can rock. And they built the defense around me. Wow. So me and my twin brother uh, went over there and we just did what we normally did in public school. And we played football, he played basketball, did wrestling, we ran track. And anything that we did, we was natural athletes and everything. Wow. But it wasn't until one of the, the, the coaches from the public school, been knowing my family for years, um, <clears throat> took us to Tennessee Balls every spring break. And just, he took his time, his efforts. So Tennessee life. University? Tennessee Balls, yeah. Okay. Tennessee okay. University. Took us there. And we just sat and we watched the spring game. And then the uh, James Banks was the quarterback there. And uh, any, anybody from Indianapolis know how talented James Banks was, the starting quarterback for and they put us up in the dorm room, and a knock came at the door at 5.30 in the morning, the second year we did it. And they said, come downstairs, young man. Uh, came downstairs, they was like, we're so sorry. I was like, did I do something? They was like, we know who you are. We sorry we didn't recognize it before. We want to offer you and your twin brother a full scholarship. Wow. You talking about being blown away as your first offer is one of these major schools? Yeah. Out the gate. Out the gate. And then that's when you knew how talented you were. Yeah. The next day, within 24 hours, I had 10 scholarships. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. So when it hit the fan that these guys were getting offers, everybody else looked into it. And that became the changing point 
in a school like, okay, but here's what another problem was. Your grades is trash <laughs> from your first two years. Talk about it. Trash. There's so many kids that are caught in the whirlwind, especially right now, mm -hmm. man. And this is really a driving point, and you experience it. These kids out here chasing offers. They have the talent. They have the talent. But, man, if talent don't meet grades, you are doo-doo. Doo-doo. You know, and, and now JUCOs are holding kids that are 20-something years old. You trying to bring your 18-year-old self to a JUCO? Yeah. Good luck. With this grown man. With that grown man. That grown man has been there. Yeah, yeah. So how about this, man? Handle business while school is free, man. But it's also about the system. You know, like I said, I'm always have my hats off for these teachers that, yeah. that substitute teachers, every teachers are getting out there. They're trying to do their best for what they got. Yeah. And they never get the respect. So flowers to all the teachers out there right now that's taking your personal time to, to teach these kids. Yeah. But the system is what it is. Yeah. So when the when all hit the fan that I got these scholarships, the realization that I wasn't gonna go D one. But thanks to Coach Wright, uh, Marty Mooney, Amy Moeller, uh, Warren Central, um, definitely you know, stand up. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, this is that's my crew. The reason why I got the, the Division One coach got me tested and realized that I could not retain information immediately as you gave it to me. I had to have it walk through and, and spoken out. Then I caught it. I'm visual. I got to see the pieces moving. Yeah. So I was able to get all my, my tests from here on out read to me. Wow. I became an honor student for the first time. We went back and he said, that's not good enough. You need to go to night school. I went to night school on Wednesdays and uh, Thursdays. He said, that's not enough. You need to go to Saturday school. Marty Mooney and uh, Amy Moeller started a Saturday tutoring session with me and my brother. And we went to the tutoring. So we went to school six days a week. And we flipped those those freshman and sophomore year grades and brought them up to B levels while we was an honor roll junior senior year to get the, the academics to match the talent. And, and to them. nobody know how hard we was. When all your friends is going to hang out at the yeah. school, you can't. When everybody's getting together on Saturday, you can't. Yeah. I went to tutor before school, went to tutor after school, went to night school, went to Saturday school, just to get to college. Just to get it, man. That's what's so, going, man. I was That's able amazing. to take that scholarship and hold on to it with that blessing from that crew. It didn't That's fade dope. away. That's dope. So I got to college to University of Michigan. Stand up. <laughs> wait a minute, champs. You wait a minute. Did Jeff was miss you? All day. Oh, wait. <laughs> talk your talk, man. Hey, hey okay. big hats to the little bros and them again for doing that. Yeah. You know, congratulations. <laughs> that, that feels boys, great, man. That feels great. So, yeah. um, just the thing. Let's go. Let's let's touch there real quick. A university like that, man. I never in my life thought I would be able to go to a university like that. But now my grades match my academics, and I got a blessing. Man. So, how was college at university? Let's let's try to, you know. I get to the what you, what you want to touch on that? I want to get to the meat and the potatoes of it. I want to go straight to the heart of it. How was college at the University of Michigan? First, uh, I break it down in this this way. I do what we came here to do was the the sport, academics, and social life. The sport life was like military. Lloyd Carr had that thing lit. It was it was in order. You was in tutoring. Uh, you have to be at the. Uh, <laughs> The facility at this time, on point in meetings, alert. The singers ran the team, and them jokes was huge. Man, I walked in the room. You look at these trees sitting down in the front. They were still tall. When they stood up, they were tall. Then they, the older guys they ran the team, and you respected them the way you play. But you still had to bring your A game on the field. Yeah, I got rocked by, <laughs> by Jason Devine, <clears throat> just like you for that. This hit, he blindsided me in my first practice. Wow. I was standing there just, you know, my eyes are big like a fan. Wow. Just laid out. He said, welcome to Division right here. Oh, wow. Welcome to Division One. Pick me up. I said, oh, no. No, this won't happen again. Oh, this won't happen again. <laughs> the brick came back out. Yeah. This won't happen again. Man, we, we got goal line. 
we lit them jokers up. Them freshmen ate every bit of it. And we told them, y'all want some more? Y'all come out, you know. But we we got we got our chances to perform at levels I never think. I got this this uh, bowl championship, Big Ten championship. Um, my first year, they let me know what level they were on. The next year, I was number two in the nation. They let me know what type of level they were on. The professional, the, the, the grooming to be a man was outstanding by Lloyd Carr. We all have our complaints, you know, how we wish it could have went a little bit better, but really look at it. Taught you how to be a man. Yeah. And that was the only father figure I had away from home. Wow. You know, uh, and the coaches, student coaches, staff there. Let's get to the academics. I was terrified to get an F. <laughs> I was yeah. terrified, man. It was so good. hard to do this work. Shout out to the U.S. Oh, God. Michigan with that one. I, I, I hate school. <laughs> yeah. I ain't never going there. Man, my first year, I didn't even want to go out. I didn't want to hang with friends. I didn't, I didn't go nowhere my first year because I said, man, that woman at home said, you bring home an F after she didn't see you make out of room? Mm-hmm. She's gonna beat the lights out of you, and you're you supposed to be a grown man. Now, I'm a grown man. So, yeah. Man, my mom would whoop the, the tail out of me, man. Mm-hmm. So, I was afraid to get an F. So, I had I had a, a decent uh, freshman year. Then, reality set in. Your social life, you wanna go hang now, it started affecting the academic life. Yeah. You wanna go experience. I, a, a drinker or anything like that. Yeah. But I finally had a little chance to to go out and let loose with the yeah. guys. And then there goes the girls. Ooh wee. Okay. Oh. Now my son is uh my first son, Chris Jr., his mom was a singer. So, you know, there it goes. I wanna challenge myself to older people and experience different things. And you know, I ran into them seeing track girls is all, all cut up now. You see other girls from other countries, kind of University of Michigan, diverse from countries. So you seeing everybody from everywhere. Wow. I'm like, what? And then Facebook just hit. You mean to tell me I can hit up somebody from over here in Kansas? So if you remember, a lot of people don't know, you could only get into Facebook if you was, was in college. Yeah. I didn't go to college. I had a Facebook page because my boy was in college. My dumb self was on the block. He was like, man, you got this Facebook page, man. The girls are crazy. And they all in college and they talking about college parties and the hottest things. It was it was the hottest. I was like, wait a it minute. It was the hottest thing. Like right now, everybody doing selfies, man. Everybody was like, yo, come and hang. Yeah. <laughs> come and hang. They was excited to, to hit us up. We was excited to hit them up. Yeah. Man, it was just it was so much fun. So I got blasted by the social club. The That's social great. club just hit me and man it was it was fun it was you know you just like like what this is out here so you want you want more but you want to experience it you want to hang you want to be you know you're already a popular circle yeah. but you don't know how popular you are until you start going out yeah where you got <laughs> you outnumbered what we say like seven to one seven to one seven to one Ooh. in one spot and, and you're an athlete and you athlete oh uh, yeah you was in trouble big fella I can't trust people. I think a lot of that trust goes from the beginning. And it just kept adding boom after boom after boom. And now I can really understand not having trust issues because, man, I'm getting some clock out here. Yeah. I'm a young buck, but I'm out here doing what I do. Yeah. So you looking at everybody else like y'all must be looking at me like I might be the next payday or something. Exactly. I have no lick for nobody. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to. You know how we work hard. Women say we work for this. When you in that position, I got work for nothing. Yeah. I walk to the door. It's almost bringing me appetizers. Would you like something to drink? Would you like something to eat? It, it's the offering is not that hard. If you a popular circle, you that guy. You even got an edge about you. Things are so easy. You got fans that's making it easy. Yeah. You got yeah your family. It's proud of you. Yeah. And then you got the social life that says, come in, everything. <laughs> and then you guys are uh, getting the opportunity to travel all over the United States. So you're getting to see something different, a variety of something all the time. Right. You know, I can't imagine how 
you know, tempting and intriguing that was, man. You know, so, excuse me, I want to go. Now school is this going well. You're, you're about to graduate, and you're looking at, all right, I'm an adult now. What's next? What's after college football? What's coming up next? What happened? You start thinking about that around about your senior year. And it's almost like when you're in high school, you're applying for college. This time you can't apply for nothing. You know you got to put it all out there because us in the sport world, we all, we all want to go to the next level, professional, yeah. no matter what it is. And you only know that 1% is going to stand out. 1%. Yeah. So every game, I'm going to stand out. You're going to see me flying in from somewhere. I'm going to waterboard somebody. Yeah. It could be the, the water ball on the sideline. He blew him up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I tried to do every game. I knew I had to put it all out there. And from the comments, from the commentators to the fans, the, 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 the experts, they're yeah. saying you're doing a good job. What was the craziest thing you heard in college about yourself as far as maybe a highlight, you know, or something that happened? I mean, I don't care what it was, man. What was like... With, with, he was like, man, they, they said my name on such and such on it. Like, what was the biggest thing that, that made you feel like, yeah, okay? I made the ESPN top 10. Uh, I had one of the hardest hits um, against Michigan State Little Brothers. Um, <laughs> I still like, shot. threw an out screen to the running back, and we've been, we've been going over this play, and I got cussed out so badly in practice by my coach because <laughs> apparently I was not picking up him fast enough. <laughs> So, yeah. on film, you, I'm watching him. He move, I move. He move, and then he just flare out to the outside. As soon as he turn around, catch the ball, I hit him with everything I had. Man, I closed. I said, close now. Boom. I didn't think my like God. I said, oh, I got him. So my coach was yelling at me. <laughs> but it ricochets, and it was all over, all over his man. Man, can you picture yeah. if that would have happened now, how far would that would have went? I would have got a penalty. <laughs> 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 and we call it targeting, hitting with with his hand. <laughs> it would have went viral because it's on, it's more ways of putting it out. We need to find this clip, man. If y'all can find this clip, it. But you got it? I get can it. we get this clip? I want to see the clip. Up high, want to see the clip. Right? It's, it's the last you know, thing. We want to see the clip, man. The last one I tell you what, y'all fans, if y'all find the clip before he find the clip, let us know. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. You too. Go to Chris Graham, Michigan linebacker. I already put in a highlight for you. I love it. It's the, last, it's the last one. Wow. Wow. So yeah. now you have an opportunity. Yeah. What happens? Go to the next level. Um, man, I feel like this is part of why we we started this, this, uh, this YouTube podcast. I was misguided. Mmm. I, so I met with agents and they talk fast. Yeah. And, and when you're talking about the trust issue, anxiety even more, they're telling you what you can make and how, what round you can go in. And they're using girls to, to, to reach out to you on Facebook to, to set up meetings with you. Wow, wow. They were doing Can you say all of this? I can say all of this. I mean, <laughs> back then they, they talk about that's, it. That's they tax Talk about it. Let's they, go. They use the hottest chick to hit you up and then you like, I don't mess with, with this, but hey, then you know they show up. They show up, can we meet up? Can we this and that? And at this time you don't it's just conversations, you know, I, I wasn't agreeing anything, I didn't take anything, so let's get that out in the air. I'm not that type of person. But those conversations that you don't have a mentor there, you don't have your parents there, you don't have somebody there. You you face to face with these people and they're telling you what you're worth and they talk so fast. So I'm like, eh. you know, it, it goes from there. So from there, um, man, I, I was just ready for the next level. That's where I wanted to go. So, you know, when uh, you had your experience um, with the NFL, mm -hmm. was it what you thought? No. No, it was like standing on the highway and trying to ask for a ride. Wow. There was so much going on. I was so happy to be there. I was a fan. I can't stop smiling from ear to ear. I'm so happy to be at this next level. But as soon as you sat down, they were getting up. And you're like, what, what, what's next? Nobody talked to you. 
Nobody took you underneath their wing. Nobody mentored you. There's your, there, here's your big playbook. Go study it. Goodbye. Wow. So you have childhood trauma. You find an outlet in sports. The people love you. The girls love you. It takes you to Division One. You immediately become a hit. You meet your first child's mother in college. Mm -hmm. You go as high as you can possibly go. Now you take your talents to the next level, and it's still not enough. Not enough. And it's after the NFL. You find yourself even going out of the country to, to prove yourself. To prove yourself, huh? So you, you try other leagues as well. Mm -hmm. Then what led you to the military? Uh, my second oldest brother, uh, Richard, um, he pulled himself back from college to become uh, a father. He wanted to be responsible like my mom told him. So he wanted to take care of his first daughter. And he's like working, being a little odd job is not going to get it. He wanted to be a part of something that was going to be uh, there in longevity. So he became a police officer. Wow. And he kept <clears throat> telling me, bro, if this is not going to work for you, you know, come out here, I got you. Yeah. I got you. This is something that's going to take care of you. That same feeling like you got a life room, you do have in the law enforcement mm -hmm. world. Now, we grew up in the hood. I don't like cops. That's, that's how I feel. I don't like the cops. I don't like dealing with them because I feel like there's a lot of stuff that yeah. we deal with in that environment. You don't mess with the police. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. Okay. But when I took a ride along with him, and I see that he was our superhero of where we come from to our people. He made a difference that when somebody, if he pulled over somebody, he's trying to help you. Hey, get your the license plate fixed. Hey, you know, your license is suspended. Hey, go get that fixed. Hey, this is over here. Don't do that next time. He's helping. Wow. Instead of saying, okay, I'm here to just put you behind these metal bars to ruin your life. And I just kept, and, and the, the approach you know, everybody's tense when they get cops. Just the approach from our, our culture to him, like, don't you know he's like, you, you can't use some of these things you say on the racial side. Wow. We, we've been there. We come from this neighborhood exactly like you come from. You can't yeah. tell me that. Yeah. And that's, I looked at him like a superhero. Wow. I still do to this day. That's, that's my big yeah, world. Man. Shout out to you. But, man. shout out to you. Bro. You're competitive. You want to compete with your brother. I always want to compete with. That's my that's my my, my competitor right there. So I said, uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go federal, so I can tell you what to do. <laughs> so you know, I I, uh, I got into it, and um, I said the only way to, to go federal is I have no experience of so going the military. Wow. So that way I can get that experience, so that way I can apply and have credibility behind it. Yeah. You know, uh, so you find yourself in the military and you ended up, after getting out of the military, serving our country, becoming a veteran, yeah. join the police department, also to follow in, into your brother's footsteps. Yeah. You know, then you find yourself being an entrepreneur outside of the police department, mm -hmm. starting your own businesses, doing all of these things, and you would think, out of all of these things, man, because you have an amazing story, an amazing story. Long resume. An extremely long resume. Yeah. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. But out of all of these things, you still have not, up to this point of your life, found something that's really fulfilling within you. Yeah. Until when? What happened? As far as career or I'm talking about life, I'm talking about I'm gonna go a little deeper into it because um, I want I want people to really know this side of you mm -hmm. and some things that's been going on in your life it took you to go on a search 
after you reached the tops of the tops, where did you realize, I need God? <clears throat> let me let me speed this up, and I'm going to touch on all of it. Um, I failed. I felt like I made it a lot of places, and I felt like I failed a lot of places. I, I won't put dirt on all the experience, but some of the experience was traumatizing, very traumatizing, to a point where I fell into depression. Wow. Uh, uh, I had suicidal thoughts at the age of 24. When the NFL let me down in a way that I didn't make it where I wanted to be, but I found now that I faced it again two years ago. Uh, I'm looking at losing everything. All the stuff that we, we just said was amazing, but I lost the career. I lost uh, all my, my possessions. I lost the relationship. Um, and here I thought I was trying to do better in all these phases. I'm trying to be a better man in my own way. Um, I lost it all and I faced depression. And here I am looking down the barrel of a gun. Mm, wow. And I'm like, how do I beat this demon for five hours? My oh God. And I don't know how I made it at the house, but I made it at the house and I just start taking up and lifting to, to hide my tears. There's many days I was on the treadmill crying. Many days I was in my workout and nobody could see it with just a hoodie on because I'm ashamed of all the things I accomplished, but I fell so low. Um, and I tell a story about meeting you <clears throat> that, you know, all those things appeared when I'm at the altar and I don't know which way to go. I'm by myself. I'm not in a team like a room. I'm not on a, a in a uniform, I'm not around family and by myself. I'm at the altar and I'm losing it. And I just feel a hand pull up and embrace and say, I'm not going to let you go. You're not by yourself. And that is something that you will never embrace somebody, your friends, your brother, anything like you do, uh, your parents, your mom, your dad. But to have a brother to do that, I just fell apart. And, and you kept staying with me every day. Every time you see me, kept staying with me, kept building me to a point where I didn't quit. I didn't go back into that suicidal thoughts. I didn't fall in that depression. I battled this crap every day. And I realized I need a better foundation. And this is the whole reason for this podcast. And my pain is going to help save somebody's life because I face those things that you said I faced. You can't tell me that I haven't experienced life the way you experienced it. I've touched your job. I didn't have the same type of job. I didn't have the same type of background. And I didn't face the worst. And, and when you feel like you're out here by yourself and you're ready to jump, all we needed was a brotherhood to save us. You know, and, and this is why the podcast is, is set from here. So, That's amazing. Um, so, I want to, you know, end it here. I think this is the perfect stopping point for us because you want to point a finger and we want to reach a hand out in this moment mm -hmm. to, you know, you that are watching. You know, maybe you're a woman and you're concerned about your son, you're concerned about your brother, you're concerned about your husband, a friend, or you. <laughs> Are that man that's concerned that you don't have a resource, an outlet, or just a brotherhood to lean on, man. You have that in us. And we want to extend our hand. And it's not a hand to push you away, but it's a hand to lift you up. If I were to leave a scripture with you, um, I'll paraphrase it. Uh, there was a conversation between Simon Peter and Jesus. And, you know, Peter was going through his rant, saying, Lord, I love you, I believe in you, I know who you are. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires you. That means he wants you, he wants to, to sift you as we." 
But Jesus looked at him and said, I pray for you that your faith fails you not. One of the best parts of that, of that particular verse, he said, after you go through what you're going through, after you come out of where you are, after you find relief and after you realize that, hey man, ain't no other way to go but up, God, I need you and I, I, I want you. He said, after you realize and you go on your path, I want you to reach back and I want you to strengthen your brother. Mm. And that's what we're here for. We'll end it with a prayer. And this is just a prayer of encouragement. I appreciate you being courageous to share your story. I appreciate you, man, because there are so many people that will be able to relate mm -hmm. and will show compassion and will also will lean on God the same way you found them, whether if you found them earlier in your life and all of these things still happen, or if you found them in your 30s like you did. They'll understand that you have to, you have to be available, you have to show love in spite of your story, in spite of the things that you go through. We'll leave you with this. Gracious and heavenly Father, we thank and we praise you for this time and for this moment. We thank and we praise you, God, first and foremost, for you being you, Lord, for you being the God of a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance and an infinity chance, God. God, for you being the God of grace, for you being the God of love. We thank you, Lord, for our brotherhood. We thank you for the creation, God, that you're allowing us to, to step out on faith and to create in the midst of chaos, in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of all of the things that's going on in this world, God. God, if we're just that bit of good in the midst, God, we're willing to walk through this valley. I want you to touch every person that's on the end of watching this and let them know this is not just a, a spiritual cry, but this is not just a, a spiritual channel, but this is for real. This is real talk. This is men's talk. This is reality talk. And the traumas in your life and the things that you've experienced is not your final destination. The thing that you're going through right now is not your final destination. We are here to uplift you. We are here to encourage you. Lean on me. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Jesus, Amen. Amen. Thank Mind you. you, tune in. We got more to go out. Um, this man right here has a, a beautiful story. We got other people that's been reaching out from the small clips that want to share theirs. Uh, we want to touch everybody, all men from 21 and up. Um, everybody got a story. Everybody got some experience they're going through. And we want to also provide assistance because you can get someone here just talking to depth about their experience, but they still don't have an outlet. So we're working hard right now with the Trayer production team and uh, other resources to provide uh, therapy. Um, our brotherhood was what we're going to call it, brotherhood mentorship, um, and then other connections to, to get men to refocus and, and change around your situation and stand up and have a safe place to go. So uh, I appreciate y'all staying uh, yeah. tuned to this. Uh, yes, it, it was a little bit longer. Um, I have, a, I have a long resume, so sorry. <laughs> uh, that, that, yeah. you know, we definitely appreciate it. This is, this is lots of something big, something bigger than us. Uh, God is showing that this is going to go over and touch uh, all over the country. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, if you guys got any uh, questions, anything like that, please leave a, a question uh, below. We're going to try to reach out as much as possible. And uh, we just thank y'all for giving us the opportunity to start something amazing, Absolutely. a safe place for men. Let's get our men back focused and leading the pack like we should. So we appreciate it. Yeah. The head is focused. The body will follow. Yes. You know, be sure to reach out to us on all of our social media handles. They should be at the bottom of each screen. Feel free to follow our personal pages. Get to know us as we uh, walk throughout our journeys in life, man. We're very, very friendly gentlemen. So you can reach us. You know, we're accessible, you know, and we look forward to, you know, our, our future 
endeavors, man. We're taking this thing around the world, baby. Thank you. Let's go. God bless y'all.